Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. In this Photoshop tutorial, you'll learn how to process your photo with an effect inspired by the popular Instagram user Orangutan. It's a very cool style, and I especially love that subtle 3D red sign effect. You'll learn how to do this with just three layers. You'll start off by learning how to create the red blue anaglyph effect, which you can do simply by unchecking one option. It's seriously that easy. You'll also learn a cool trick for tinting your photo with the tone curve. It's the first time I've ever showed this trick to anyone. It lets you pick any color, transfer it to the tone curve, and it's as easy as copying and pasting three numbers. If you're interested, keep watching and you'll learn how to create this effect and so much more. Let's start by creating your 3D look which is very easy to do. Here's how to do it. Start by pressing Ctrl or Command J to duplicate the layer. Before we proceed, right click on a layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. It's always a good idea to do this and you'll see why later. Right click on the layer and choose Blending Options. In the Advanced Blending section, uncheck the red channel. This will make your layer only show in the green and blue channels. If you don't know what channels are, a color photo is made of three channels, red, green, and blue that when combined, forms a color photo. Currently it looks like the blending mode did nothing. But if you select the move tool and move the layer around, you can see that it's creating this red sign anaglyph effect. And that's all there is to this 3D anaglyph effect. It's really that easy to do. But what exactly is happening? Well, if you go into the channels panel, you can see that the current layer is only visible in the green and blue channel. It's not visible in the red channel. And that's basically how the 3D anaglyph look is created. Obviously, it's not a real 3D stereoscopic effect, it's just a simulated effect. If you put on 3D glasses, the model isn't going to magically pop out of your screen. Anyways, let's switch back to the RGB channel and undo the layer back to where it was before. Instead of moving the layer, press Ctrl or Command T to activate the transform tool. We're going to enlarge this layer slightly. You can do this by holding Alt and Shift if you're on Windows, or Option and Shift if you're on Macs and dragging the corner outwards. The Alt or Option key will make it stretch from the center of your layer. And the Shift key will preserve the aspect ratio, so you don't get anything that's too wide or tall. Enlarge it just by a tiny bit. For this tutorial, I'm going to enlarge it more than I usually would so that you can see what's going on. Here's how the image looks like before and after. If we zoom into 100%, you can see that the edges are very hard. To soften it, we'll add a slight blur by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to blur it by 3 pixels, and you can see that it softens the edges quite a bit. Also remember earlier when we converted the layer into a smart object? Well if you look in the layers panel, you can see that the filter got applied as a smart filter. You can double click on the smart filter and change the settings anytime you like. This is one of the main benefits of using smart objects. You can also resize the layer up and down as many times as you like, and unlike a raster layer, the smart object won't lose any image quality. There's more benefits, and if you want to find out, there's a link to a tutorial in the video description that you can watch later. Let's get back to this tutorial. So now we have this 3D anaglyph effect, but I don't want it distorting the model's face. To fix this, we're going to add a layer mask. In the layers panel, Click on the Add New Layer Mask button. Select the Gradient tool from the toolbar, and in the Options bar, select the Black to White Gradient. Click on this button here to switch to the Radial Gradient. Drag a line outwards from the center of the model's face, and the anaglyph effect should now only be visible around the outer areas of your photo. Looking at the layer mask, which by the way you can preview by holding the Alt or Option key and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail, it's hiding this layer where the black spot is and fading it back out where the white areas are. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Next, we're going to blur the outer area slightly to replicate the effect that you get with those abstract lens like a lens baby. Select the background layer and before we apply a filter, right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object. Now you can go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. Set the blur method to zoom and quality to draft. I'm going to move the blur center to roughly where the model space is. Before I click OK, you're probably wondering, why draft mode? Well, the interface for a radio blur filter is very outdated. 
and you can see a preview of how it looks before you apply the filter. The filter is also CPU intensive, so if you're working on a high res photo like this one and you set the quality to best, it will take a long time to process. It's better to just leave it on draft until you find the right settings. I'm going to click OK and keep changing these settings until it looks right. It usually takes a couple of tries, but once you find the right settings, you can change it back to best quality and let it render. When you're done, apply the same filter to your other layer which you can do from the filter menu. Photoshop will show your most recently used filter on the top and it will apply it with the same settings. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Finally, we're going to finish this image with a color grading. Go to the adjustments panel and add a curves adjustment layer. If you don't see this panel, you can open it by going to Window, Adjustments. Make sure that this layer is positioned above all of your other layers. Start by dragging the top right point downwards to dim the image. Add a point in the middle and drag it back to the middle. This will keep your midtones in the midtones. Next, add a point in between the two points and create a very slight S-curve. The S-curve will add a little bit of contrast. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Now we're going to use the same adjustment to tint your image orange. Now when it comes to tinting, we're going to be using the individual red, green, and blue tone curves which a lot of people have troubles using. I have lots of tone curve videos in my channel that you can check out later. But right now, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that will make it much easier and it's going to take all of the guesswork out of it. This is the very first time I'm showing this trick to anyone and it's super cool. Open the color panel which you can find by going to Window, Color. Click on the panel menu located on the top right corner and select RGB color. Now you can pick any color you want to tint your image with. If you want a strong tint, pick a color near the middle of the chart. For something more subtle, pick a lighter color. I'm going to pick a peach color like this. Go back to your curves adjustment and switch to a red channel. Select the top right point and copy your number from the red channel in the color panel to the output in the curves panel. Repeat this for a green channel and a blue channel. You can also use this trick to tint the shadows. I'm going to select a dark green color like this. You should pick something very dark and close to the bottom. But this time, instead of copying and pasting the number to the top right point of your tone curve, paste it to the bottom left point. And we're done! You just learned how to tint your photo without any guesswork. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Here are some more examples of other photos processed with this technique. By the way, if you use Lightroom, it's better for your workflow if you apply the color grading in Lightroom as opposed to Photoshop. You'll still need to process a photo in Photoshop for the 3D and the blur effect. But if you save the color grading for Lightroom, you can always change the color grading without opening Photoshop and you can also save it as a preset to apply to other photos. It's just more convenient. The only issue with Lightroom is that it's not the best software for learning the tone curve. It has a small graph, it's not very responsive, kinda laggy, and you're missing out on a lot of tools you get in Photoshop. So I recommend that you learn the tone curve in Photoshop first and then try replicating the same tone curve in Lightroom. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. I also want to thank Jonathan Mirandi for requesting this video. If you have any requests, you're welcome to let me know in the comments below. Also, this channel has reached 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. And I know in the YouTube world, 10,000 subscribers is like nothing. But to me, it's a lot. And I want to thank you guys so much for your support, your kind messages. Um, I love the interaction so much, it's exceeded my expectations. And I really appreciate you guys watching my video. So thank you so much for making YouTube a great community. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you again in the next video.